Hello, my name is Thomas, and in this video, we're going to go over how to create a custom sign-in and password reset flow using Velo. This video is a part two in a series where we started building a custom sign-up flow using a t-shirt e-commerce store template that's available on Velo. And what we're going to do in this video is continue it. If you're interested in learning how to create a custom sign-up form, please check out the previous video in this series. Before we head to the editor, let's check out the Velo reference to learn more about some of the APIs that we're going to use in this video. If we check out the authentication object, we can see that we have a whole set of functions that we're going to be using. Specifically, we're going to use the login function to create a custom login flow, as well as the send set password email, which is going to give the user an email that's going to allow them to reset their password if they forgot their password for whatever reason. Let's head over to the editor and get started. Now that we're in the editor, the first thing we're going to do is check out some of the UI that we built for this project. So we're going to scroll down a bit and click on where it says website login. And you can see that this is under light boxes. Normally when you create a Wix members app on your Velo site, it basically adds a default login and sign up flow. But what we did in this project was create a custom one using light boxes. Inside of this light box, we have a text element up here. We have some text inputs, a button, as well as text that we're going to use to display whether the user has created an error based on what they typed, as well as a button that's going to allow the user to also reset their password if they need to do that. So if we go down to the Velo code, you can see that there's nothing here yet, and this is where we're going to get started writing some code to make a custom login flow. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the API that we're going to be using to create the login function. So we're going to say import authentication from Wix members. And the authentication object has the functions that we saw previously in the Velo reference. Uh, another thing we're going to do is actually import Wix window. And what that's going to allow us to do is close the light box that we create as soon as we the user has entered a login and successfully logged in. So we're going to import Wix window from Wix window. And you can see that the autocomplete gives it to us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a click handler for this login button right here. And when the user presses this button, it's going to validate what the user typed in here. Now, if we click on the text inputs here and we click on settings, you can see that we have some default input validation. And we could have done this in multiple ways since this is just a email and password. It's really easy through Velo. We can just click on the settings and for the type, we can say email. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to make it so the text input expects something that's typed in there to fit the validations of what an email looks like. Similarly, you can see the same thing for a password. And that's also going to censor the password as you're typing it in. Um, so that's always useful. So when it comes to uh, client-side validation, we're halfway there. We just need to make sure that when we actually submit it, before we call the function that's going to log in, it actually is some valid inputs. So we're going to click on the sign up button. We're going to open up the code panel again. And on the side here, we can see that we already have a function, but let's actually get rid of that and create a new on click handler. And just like that, we created a event handler. What we're going to do now is check the validations for what the user types in. So first thing we're going to do is select this input and this input. So it's email input and password input. We're going to go back into the code panel and we're going to say let email equal to $W, which is our basic selector for anything that's built on Velo. Email input. And then let's do one for the password. So we'll say password is equal to dollar w hashtag password input. Next, what we're going to do is 
actually check the value and make sure that it's valid. In order to do that, what we're going to have to do is say if email dot valid and dot valid as you can see down here indicates if a input element is valid and that's according to whatever regular expression or type that you set to the field so we're gonna say if email is valid so actually let's check if it's not valid and we'll say if it's not valid then we're gonna have to update the the form so that it displays an error so we're going to say uh, email dot update validity indication and basically that just means that it's going to show a red box around it uh, telling the user or signifying that they should type in a valid email we're going to do the same thing for the password now so we're going to say if password is not valid um, and that's what the exclamation point means it's just negating the logic there and we're going to say password dot update validity indication and in the case where either one of these are true we don't want to actually call the login function uh, but if email dot valid and password dot valid then in this case we actually want to call the login function and if it returns an error back then we're going to want to display that error that we created so we're going to say if this is true we're going to use the authentication object say login and then the the login function from Wix members accepts two inputs, so the email and the password for the user. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say email dot value instead of just email, because remember we just selected the element here, but we didn't actually get what was inside of it. Uh, and that's what the value property is. And then we're also going to send the password value to this function. So we're gonna say password dot value. Uh, so now that we've passed those two parameters, if the result is successful, that means that they logged in and there's no issue. So that basically means that we can just close the light box and the user should be logged in. So we're going to say Wix window dot lightbox dot close. But in the case that the user typed in the wrong email or wrong password, we want to both show an error, uh, which we created here. So we can see it says incorrect email or password, try again. And we also want to make sure that the light box does not close. So we're going to catch that error now. We're going to say dot catch error. And what we're going to do down here is we're going to first select this element down here called error message and we're going to show it. So we're going to say $W hashtag error message. And let's just make a variable because we're going to be referencing this a bit. So we're going to say let error equal to or error message since we already called used the name error up here and then we're gonna say error message dot show and show actually has some options that you can use here so we're gonna use the bounce animation just to make it a little bit interesting and after this successfully shows, we want to hide it then because that way the user knows if on the next try they've actually typed in the correct password or not. Or So we're going to then say set timeout because we also want to give the JavaScript time to run the animation. And we're going to create a callback. And then this timeout is going to run for... 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. So basically it'll pause for three seconds and then we're gonna hide the message.
So based on the logic that we wrote here, it checks when the user actually clicks on the sign up button, which is right here, it then does some validation. So it first checks if the email is valid. If it's not, then it updates the border around that input, makes it red. Then it checks the password. It does the same thing in that case. And if both the email and password are valid, then we can send the login function to run. And if it returns a successful message, the light box closes, and that means the user is signed in. And if uh, not, and an error is sent back from the server, that means that the user typed in the wrong email or password, and the user then gets a red message that indicates that there's an error. So let's actually save. And let's check out and see if this works on our published site. So prior to the start of this video, I went ahead and made an account on our website. And what we're going to do now is test the login function. So we're going to click on login. This right here is the light box for creating an account. So let's actually click on login down here. And this is the form that we just coded. So I'm going to enter this email that I made and I'm going to enter a password. So first thing we're going to test is to see if it gives me an error if the password is incorrect. And we can see that the error message bounces in and three seconds later it bounces out. Next what we want to do is test the client side validation. So is the email an actual email and is the password an actual password? So if I get rid of the password and I click on login, you can see that the login function is not called and instead we have a border around the password input. Let me put a password down here and then let's write an invalid email. And if I click login, you can see that the same thing happens for email. And finally, let's actually log in and see if the login function works. So we'll click on login. And as you can see, we've logged in into our account. If we clicked up here, we could see our orders, addresses, wallet, and so on. So now let's head back to the editor and actually code the password reset form. Creating a password recovery form is very similar to the login form that we just created. In this case, when the user types in into this email input, text input, we're gonna make it so that when they hit on the submit button here, it then calls the function that sends the recovery email over to them. We also want to make sure that the email that they type in is a valid email. So just like before, if we click on settings, you can see that the type is set to email and we'll be able to use that inside of Velo. So let's head over to the code panel and let's import some of the APIs that we're going to be using for this. So we'll import authentication from Wix members. And we'll also import Wix window because that'll allow us to close the light box once the user submits their email. So we'll say import Wix window from Wix window. Next, we're gonna head back here. We're gonna click on the button and then we're gonna create a click handler for it to check if the email that they typed in is valid. So we're gonna click on the on click here add a function and now what we want to do is select that text input so we're gonna say let's email equal to dollar w and we're gonna type hashtag email input next thing we're gonna do is we want to check to make sure that the email that they typed in is valid so we're gonna say if email dot valid is not true we're gonna take that email input and we're gonna update the validity indication so again that's just gonna add a red border around the text input box now if it's a valid email we wanna then actually send the recovery email over so we're gonna say if and actually we can just do an else statement in this case, since there's only one case. We're then gonna call the authentication object and we're gonna say 
send set password email. And basically this is a function that takes one parameter. And in this case, we're just gonna pass over the email that the user typed in. So we're gonna say email, which at this point is the element dot value. And on success, what we wanna do is pop up the message that is in the bottom that indicates that a request email has been sent if the email is a valid registrant for the website. So we're gonna go back here and let's see the name of it again. It's called reset confirmed. So we're gonna say dot then dollar w dot reset confirmed. And we're gonna show this. And we're also gonna use the bounce effect again just to make our style consistent. And then after three seconds, instead of hiding this, we're just gonna close the light box. So we're gonna create a set timeout. And we're gonna make it wait three seconds. And then what we're gonna do is type Wix window dot lightbox dot close. And now let's save this. Publish our site. And let's head over to our live site and test out this password reset functionality. So we're back on the live site. First thing we're gonna do is sign out since we previously logged in using the login flow that we created. We're gonna click on login. We're gonna press on login again. And here we finally have the reset form. So let's click on that. And we can see that we have an input here. So first thing we wanna do is test to see if the validity is actually being checked. And you can see that automatically, even before I press submit, because of the, the type is set to email and I just unfocused from it, it's already has a red border, meaning that we didn't type a correct email. If I paste in a proper email, you can see that there's no error. But if I paste something in that's not an email and I hit on submit, you can see that it has a red border, meaning I have to add a valid email. Next, I'm gonna enter in the email for the temporary email I created for this account. And then I'm gonna hit submit. And down here, you can see it says a reset form, reset password email has been sent. And three seconds later, it closes. Now let's head over to our inbox. And right here, you can see that we have a create your new password email. In this video, we went over how to create a custom login and password reset form using the Wix members API. As always, if you have any questions or would like a specific topic covered in our next videos, let us know in the comments below. See you next time.